wondered about that. I just said, you know, it seems very strange to me that, there, that these certain topics are taboo to certain individuals. And I think that um, now with a lot of the research I've done, we, we, we can have a better idea why that is. Absolutely. And I mean, it's it's just basically an, an, an arrogance. And obviously, this is an, an unwillingness for certain people to go in that direction. And just because they have made their minds up doesn't mean that everybody else has. And there's always more to the story. And there there's always more that they probably have shut down to and don't realize about these kinds of topics as well. And furthermore, why are they even interested in controlling what everybody else is supposed to hear or listen to anyway? If people are, if they just let go of their control freak nature that they have and just let people decide for themselves, what's the problem with that? And and furthermore, how does that then make them any different than the people that are trying to criticize that are at the top of the new world order that are trying to control the whole global population? They just, uh, they're just a micro version of that, Josh. No, I, yeah, I couldn't agree more. My research totally backs that, that statement right there up. They are a microcosm of that because I've seen, uh, the same kind of thing happen. It's, it, it's almost this dogmatic attitude. It's like you, you could be a part of the club. You can be a part of, you know, the truth movement, whatever, but you, you, you have to basically, you have to think the way we do. You have to have the same opinions. And if you don't have those same opinions, then we're going to, you know, we're going to ostracize you. We're going to call you a plant. We're going to call you a fed, whatever else, just because you don't see things the way that the intelligentsia of the truth movement sees them. I mean, I had a big problem with that, and that's why I stopped working with uh, the local 9-11 group I was working with because uh, we, we started bringing in information that was sort of wider picture, and they just didn't want to have it. They wanted to focus on everything that had to do with, uh, with 9-11, and that was it. And to me, that sort of seemed like, while 9-11 is a very important issue, uh, as you mentioned earlier, it's, you know, as with any of this stuff, it's not the only issue. So the only way we're going to gain a greater perspective is by looking at everything. That's absolutely right. And, and, uh, dogmatic, dogmatic, uh, people seem to kind of cling to, to, to certain organizations and groups and what have you. Yeah. And I've never been about that. It's, it's, for me, it's always been about follow the path, whatever, you know, that leads down to. And, and if, you know, even if I went on a wrong path then that I consequently understand afterwards, What's the problem with that? Then I've gone, I've become wiser in the process. I've, I've understood that now and I now I'll move on in a new direction. So no problem at all. It's nothing. There's no worries, you know, but this is like this life and death every time just because you <laughs> read a book about the Anunnaki, you know, what I mean? come on. I people, understand. Yeah, relax, no, I understand because, you know, you know uh, it's the same way for me. I, I, I constantly change, you know, what I believe, Henrik. I mean, what I'm believing is, is, is not a static thing. It's constantly ever changing. Some of the things that I believed six months ago, a year ago, are totally different than what I believe now because the research, new information is always constantly coming in. And, uh, uh, and there's been, you know, there's just been little things, little tidbits come at you and you pick up on that and you go, Oh, you know, because for me, I had heard a lot about, um, talking about these topics that seem to be kind of taboo. I had heard, um, for years this stuff about, uh, about the Jesuits and about, uh, the Knights of Malta and sort of that whole uh, end of things. But I, I, I never really saw a lot of, information on or a lot of research on it so i kind of like everybody else kind of dismissed that uh as not being true or whatever else and of course i you know i'd heard people like eric john phelps and stuff like that and and some of that stuff just kind of seemed uh like it wasn't correct to me and then when i was researching the council for national policy all of a sudden all these connections to the jesuit order started coming up to the knights of malta all these people in this group have these connections and i started going wait a second you know, is this why there's sort of been a moratorium on talking about those groups within the truth movement is because so many of the people in the, in the so-called truth movement have connections to these groups? It does, it, it, it does appear that way. Um, so, you know, again, it's just one of those things where you start to understand, okay, this is why, uh, you know, they say, oh, don't talk about the Anunnaki or don't talk about UFOs or don't talk about extraterrestrials, talk about the bankers and talk about the Rothschilds and blah, blah, blah. Um, that was another thing that was a problem for me. It just seemed like, why? Why are you saying that these topics over here are okay and approved to talk about, but these topics over here are taboo? And again, uh, my research has shown me that the reason that uh, that is is because a lot, some of these people are working either directly for or as uh, agents of uh, disinformation and gatekeeping for the uh, establishment, for the custodians, for the people in, in charge themselves. And that's, it's a very scary thing, but... Uh, there is a lot of evidence points in that direction, so I'm sure we'll talk about uh, a lot of that here today, Henry. Absolutely. Uh, I want to talk more about the, your take on the Knights of Malta, the Jesuit Order, some of the other organizations tied to this, the, the Catholic Christian uh, you know, organization, religion and such as well later. Uh, if we briefly then look at the CNP, the Council for National Policy, what do you think it means that we have people like 
Stan Monteith, Pat Buchanan, as you mentioned, uh, Chuck Missler, Paul Craig Roberts, Larry Pratt, uh, Jerome Corsi, uh, some of these people, that, that they are part of this group. And, and how do you think that their research is tied to the agenda of the group? And, and maybe you even, do we know anything about the agenda of the CMP, considering that we, we don't hear that much about it, uh, Josh? Yeah, I mean, it's pretty, it's pretty obvious when you look at, at, at their policies, you look at some of the stuff that, they, that, that, that uh, they're behind, that they're just as much a globalist organization as any other uh, uh, group you can bring up. But um, what, I've, what, what I've found, it, it's taken me you know, almost four years now to really realize this, um, because as I mentioned at first, when I first got into finding out about the CMP, I think me, like everybody else, co- kind of sort of um, had this, I, this, maybe this mentality of guilt by association and that um, you know every single person that's a member of the group knows what's going on at every level. And I found that to be just absolutely not true. I think that, yeah. like, for instance, Jerome Corsi, uh, you know, I've talked to him in person before at, at, at different events and asked him about uh, the Council for National Policy, and he openly, openly talks about it and says, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm, I, I'm a member of that. Yeah, they were going to run me for president back in 08, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, he's totally willing to openly talk about it. Doesn't seem to even um, have an idea that there's anything wrong with the group or, or, or anything else. And he seemed very genuine about it. And then I hear people like, uh, you know, Phyllis Schlafly, uh, another one of these members on, on the Alex Jones show, by the way, Phyllis Schlafly, if you look into her bloodline, this was admitted by, uh, genealogy websites online. She's, uh, she's a Merovinian blue blood on both sides of her family. She's from the Bruce bloodline and the Stewart bloodline. And, and those of you who've researched this stuff for a long time will know it's very, very rare that you have um, an offspring, a child like Phyllis Schlafly that would be born of, of a bloodline on both her mother and her father's side of the family. And I, I had, went to an event one time where she was speaking and everyone rose and applauded and was just acting like she was the queen of England there. And now, you know, I, I find that out. So I think what we have here is we have some people in the group that are aware of all of the elements of the group. They are aware of what the agenda is. And these are the people that you see the most in alternative media and others trying to downplay the effect of the group, the reach of the group, what they're involved in. And then I think you have other people who are just well-meaning sort of, um, you know, people who are, tr- who are legitimately trying to get out information. But ultimately what the group seems to be is it seems to try and be a catch-all for uh, people that have certain issues, meaning you'll have one person in the group that seems to kind of focus on 9-11 or you may have one person in the group that seems to focus on UN stuff or abortion stuff. And it just seems that uh, what they do is, is they bring all these people under one roof and then essentially give them their marching orders for how they are going to approach these issues in, in the public. So, um, that combined with things like their 501c3 status that allows companies like, uh, like the Coors family and others to donate large sums of money in the millions of dollars to this group. And because they have a 501c3 tax exemption, any millions of dollars that is donated to the Council for National Policy can then be written off by these companies on their taxes, and they get all that money back at the end of the year. So that's another thing that they're doing here. It's essentially like, okay, you know, you scratch our back, we'll scratch yours. And mm. uh, I, I think that there are levels. I think they're compartmentalized as much as any other group, and I think that there are people at the highest levels that know absolutely what's going on and other people. Uh, I think it's, you have to be very, very careful about making accusations against somebody uh, who's been involved with a group because there, there are indeed cases where there are people who don't really have any idea, um, how, what, what the group is involved in at a much larger level. Well, that, that's right. It's a good point. Uh, often I, I found as well that, uh, situations are, m- are more complex than that. There, there is a tendency, uh, in the conspiracy movement to simplify in most cases. In some cases that it, it's, you know, it, it is effective. It's the right thing to do in that sense. But it doesn't by default mean that these people are, you know, guilty of a darker agenda. I guess what I question personally is the, um, you know, the rationality of, of, a, of a person who actually goes into an organization without really knowing, uh, I guess, furthermore, what the organization does or, or what their role in it. They just like to hang out with, you know, other people of, of the, the same ilk, I reckon. I, I don't know what the mentality is there, uh, but I'm not like that. So I can't understand that <laughs> level of, you know, awareness or, or, or such, Josh. But um Often it is more complex, but you mentioned the bloodline connection. That's interesting too. To you, does that mean, uh, does that automat- automatically make uh, her, the person you mentioned, kind of guilty of being tied to the inner circle? Is is it also applicable in, in that sense, uh, Josh? 
Well, I mean, I, I think that um, I don't know if it is necessarily it, it, it just doesn't help. Let's say that. I mean, when you look at when you look at some of the the ideas of like Phyllis Schlafly, for instance, she'll 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 say that women need to stay home and stay in the kitchen and make babies and not go to college uh, and be uneducated and just stay home and and and, and uh, you know take care of their man or whatever. But yet she has like three or four degrees. Uh, you know, she's not doing that. So that you know, that's one of those things where you say, okay, it's very hard to take you seriously when. Uh, you know, you've got three or four degrees. You're not staying home pumping out babies. You're being out there in the world and being, uh, you know, your own woman, except you're telling women they shouldn't do that. Uh, so that combined with some of the issues that they talk about, uh, as far as trying to, uh, goad Americans into a new civil war and armed conflict. I mean, that's the, that's the biggest thing I have a problem with, but you also have these connections back to, uh, again, you know, all connections with people in the group that go back to the Knights of Malta. You've got, uh, even somebody like, like Stan Monteith, whose, whose show Radio Liberty was started out as a, as a sovereign military order of Malta, uh, a Nazi front. They didn't even change the name from Radio Liberty over at all when, when, when Monteith took it over. And you look into him and he's, he's a part of this bloodline as well. So, uh, I, you know, again, I, it, to me, it's, it's more the fact that the group, um, is so secretive about their activities and their membership. Is why you have to question anybody that's in these bloodlines involved with the group because, uh, again, you know, if, if you guys are honestly not up to anything and there's nothing nefarious going on, I don't understand why we can't know who current members are. I don't understand why we can't know where these meetings are. I mean, hell, we, we, we know where the Bilderberg group meetings are at. We always know who we're in those things, but we still don't know where these CMP meetings are held. We don't know who's in them. And I think the, the big reason why is because if the media was actually allowed to see People, um, because oftentimes in the way you see it now, you have the right wing movement in the United States, but you also have it's splintered. There's, you know, a million different factions of it. You have these Tea Partiers over here, and then you have the Tea Party Express over here, and you have, you know, you just have these different factions and group groups within the group itself. And uh, this is essentially how they dell out the marching orders of their individual operatives, who are all right wingers, but you know, again, some who are on this issue over here. There's a great example of that in uh, in my film, The Secret Right Volume 1. A great example of that is we have a clip of uh, Larry Pratt and uh, former, uh, I guess, we, what was he, the, uh, uh, was John Ashcroft. Hmm. The, uh, and, and there's essentially, you know, this ABC News clip in that film where they're kind of arguing over each other about some new Patriot Act law stuff, and, and John Ashcroft is saying it's good, oh, it's wonderful, and then, the next thing you know, of all people, they show they show Larry Pratt from Gun Owners of America, who was involved in Iran Contra, who was involved in uh, white supremacist meetings with Howard Phillips, uh, setting up the militia movement. He said that the United States needed a militia movement like the Contras. Um, and then you hear this guy touted as some gun rights uh, expert all, all over the Alex Jones show, and he's been connected to uh, Pat Buchanan and the the uh, Center of Inter-American Security, where they were doing stuff for the Iran Contra. So. Um, you know, it becomes very, very, uh, suspicious once you start seeing these groups that are involved in, uh, various high level activity of the New World Order. Absolutely. Uh, it's interesting to see how the Bilderberg Group now have uh, their own official website. Uh, they release their member, members list online. And I'm not saying that that isn't because of the work that, that people have done, you know, in the alternative media circles and, and obviously bringing this to the attention uh, of the mainstream, uh, we have people like, I think it's Charlie Skeleton or whatever from The Guardian writing regularly now about when the Bilderberg, Bilderberg meeting occurs. And there is a lot of mainstream media, you know, attention on it right now. So obviously they, you know, have, would have transformed into another organization by now that meet uh, under circumstances where they can be left alone. So that's kind of understandable. But what we're focusing on here, obviously, is all these other little micro organizations that are out there and so forth as well. But um, to me, uh, it, it seems like there is a lot of individuals out there that are uh, participatory in, if you will, then infiltrating uh, different groups and, and in some cases maybe even starting up movements or, or groups as well for the sake of, uh, you know, one point is to, to, to rally up people around an, an, an agenda or a common cause, if you will, and in, at the first level, that might be to kind of coax people out, if you will, those who are critical of certain issues. It's good for, you know, the upper elite to kind of know who those people are, if you know what I mean, Josh, to kind of get those involved in the groups. And I want to try to kind of get to what you think is the ultimate, uh, if there is such a thing, an ultimate agenda of that. When I 
look a lot at a lot of the information out there in terms of the alternative media, I see a lot of, I do see a lot of aggressiveness. It's about gunning up, if you will, in that sense, hunkering in the bunker. And I'm not against, you know, uh, owning guns or anything like that. Or but being prepared. No. Of course, no, absolutely not. But I, I can also see the spreading of fear, this this incredible ending up in, in survival mode. And, oh, my God, shit is falling down all around you right now. But then in, in most cases, I'm not saying that it's not dire as well, but I'm just saying that it's a very this is a very black and white issue. There's no gray or middle ground here where 